What's going on? We back for another one. Before we get into it, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the damn videos, man. All right, yo. So I've been hearing, seeing a lot of videos, different people um, speaking about the whole um, uh, Devin Haney versus uh, Teofimo Lopez situation. A lot of people saying how you know Teofimo quote isn't you know necessarily undisputed, and he take until he takes on let's say Devin Haney, which I agree to that just due to the fact that Lomachenko did drop, technically drop the belt, and 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 then grab that franchise thing. So I do agree with that. Um, you know, and that oh, you know, he needs to fight Devin Haney. He needs to fight Devin Haney. He needs to fight Devin Haney. And um, you know me, I'm pretty much. I stay kind of away from all the BS and I focus on the realities of what things are, you know, and what people do, you know, depending on who they're signed to, what the affiliations are, things of that nature and whatever the, what's going on in, in general, you know, kind of like if you want to fight Javante Tank Davis, anybody wants to fight Javante Tank Davis, Javante Tank Davis team is going to be a hundred percent fully in control of that fight, period. At this point, that's just what it is. And if you're not willing to do that and abide by that, you're not fighting him. It doesn't matter who the hell you are. Period. That's just what it is. They see him as, 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 as top dog, and they're making sure they control every single facet of what goes on. And I don't blame them. Especially when you look at things like the Wilder versus Tyson Fury situation and certain things that happen. Don't blame them. Especially when they have that type of leverage at this particular time. Now, when it comes to... Devin Haney, and when it comes to Teofimo Lopez, let's kind of skip all that and say, can this fight happen? And can it happen next? And the answer to that is absolutely yes. Now, clearly Teofimo, they have certain plans for him. And I believe the plans that they have um, set for him right now is for him to go up and wait to 140, maybe have one fight at 140, then after that fight for Undisputed. You know, so when you hear his father screaming about, man, forget that Devin Haney shit. We're, we, you know, we're going after history. We're going after history. That's what he's talking about. They already, a lot of these guys already know what's going to happen two, three fights ahead or two fights ahead. And in order for you, you know, for that to be interrupted, you have to do something that makes them stop and halt and be like, yeah, let's do that instead. You got to do that. You got to give them something that's bigger than what they have set up, you know, set up. Kind of like with um, Javante Tang Davis. Before the Gamboa fight, he already knew he had a fight set up against uh, Leo Santa Cruz on pay-per-view. And at 130 pounds, everybody keeps talking this, oh, so, you know, he wanted 135 pounds. And then, you know, they forced him to come down to 130. No, go look at all the videos. Go look at everything, all the interviews he's did. He said it a million times. I'm fighting Santa My next fight's going to be on pay-per-view, and I'm fighting Santa Cruz. I'm going back down to 130. Before the Gamboa fight. That's what he was saying. So people already know, for the most part, sometimes, you know, when there's, you know, certain fights that, you know, are coming up. You know, what the plan is, like, let's say. You know, so when it comes to somebody like Devin Haney, they messed up in a whole bunch of different ways. You know, his team. First, he was supposed to, he should have got the, Loman, the Lomachenko fight off the rip. The whole purpose of him going to his team was due to the fact that he believed that match room, it would be easier for him to get a fight against uh, Lomachenko. They thought that they could get the fight against Lomachenko by going there, by going to match room. You know, but then you got effed over where Lomachenko got to fight for that belt instead of you, and it was against somebody that's from your, you know, from um, um, from your camp. In Campbell, somebody from Matchroom, they could have paid him some step aside money, paid him some money, like, yo, you hurt, nigga. Here's, here's three, this, here's $200,000, you hurt. After this match is done, we getting you that shot. Devin Haney wins this, we're gonna get you, get you that shot. If he doesn't win that for whatever reason and Lomachenko takes it, we're going to give you this other fight where we're going to pay you this amount of money, which basically they don't even out what you would have made for the Devin, you know, for, uh, for let's say if he had fought Lomachenko. We're going to make sure you're good. They could have did that, but they didn't do that. They didn't take the necessary steps to make that happen. Gary Russell Jr., the whole situation, you know, I have videos on that. I believe that was all BS. They were never going to fight him. I believe it was an Anthony Joshua versus Dante Wilder type of situation. You could tell by all the contracts that, that was set up, all the things that were in that term sheet that really was a contract that binded Russell to all types of effery. It was very clear that they had, they had their sights set on Gamboa and they are going to fight Gamboa. 
fighting someone like that would have been huge. Because right now we had the Teal fight. We got the um, against Loma. We have Santa Cruz versus uh, Tank. That's going to be huge. Then Devin Haney could have been right in the middle of that with a big, huge fight as well. You know, with a big, huge fight as well. But he didn't do that. They didn't do that. They didn't make that happen for him. But when it comes to this particular situation, they can get this fight with Teal if they want it. You know what Teal's plans are. You know what he's trying to do. The way his plans are and what he's trying to do are moves that will make him into a superstar. They, those moves will turn him into a, into a star. Him going up in weight, doesn't matter who you take on. You take on Ramirez, and Ramirez coming off a win against against Taylor, because that's going to be a big fight. Taylor with his, the whole UK thing, and then Ramirez with his whole, you know, Mexicanos. They're going to be representing him and backing him up. Those two colliding on ESPN, it's going to be a lot of energy that's going to be put towards that due to the fact that it's an undisputed fight. Then Teal's going to be able to piggyback off. Teal could be on the same card. He could be on the same card fighting someone else. Or he could fight on a different week or whatever just to get himself you know, acclimated to 140 pounds. Then after that, he's fighting for Undisputed on ESPN. They're doing 3 million views off that kid again. And they're going to be able to keep all the money in-house and have this kid turn into a superstar. They're going to be able to do all that. So you have to put something that's going to make them change their minds when it comes to that. It's not just, oh, you should fight me. Oh, you're not undisputed if you fight. Man, F all that. You got to make business moves that makes them change their minds. You know? Ramirez had a title. Fights on top rank. Fights on ESPN. They offered that mother F of $5 million damn dollars to come over there to take on Hooker. $5 million to take on Hooker. So, hell yeah, he's like, shoot. Bob was like, hey, you got to go to the zone. We got $5 million on the table. We got to go. F whatever plans they had for him, that's what they had him do. And they knew Taylor was coming over there. They knew Taylor was coming over there already. And, I, you know, and I know that was the plan, but when $5 million gets put in front of you, shoot, you got to go get that money. Mikey Garcia was supposed to fight. On PBC against Danny Garcia. He was supposed to fight against Danny Garcia. That was the plan. A contract was already put up in front of Danny. I think Danny already signed a freaking contract to fight Mikey Garcia. Eddie Hearn, Matchroom, The Zone, put up $7 million and said, Mikey, come over here and fight Vargas for $7 million. Pretty much what, you know, probably a little bit more or pretty much about the same as he would have made fighting against Mikey Garcia, against uh, Danny Garcia. You know, and Al Heyman and them were like, Shh, you better go get that. You better go get that money. They just putting it straight up. Yeah, you better go get that money. So that's what he did. They they changed the Apple card. They moved it. And this is from Eddie Hearn. This is Devin Haney's promoter that made this happen. Devin Haney's promoter make this happen. So when it comes to this particular situation, you want T.O., you can get T.O. You can get him. Come up with that same energy as you did with those other two fights. Put that money up. Whatever it might be. Four, five, six. This would be the biggest fight that you guys would ever have. Put up that money. Six, seven million dollars. Put up that money. You put that up that money, you're going to have that fight. Straight up, period. On the zone. He will go to the zone. He will go to the zone. Now, you know, he will go to the zone. Just like you could have even had the Lomachenko fight. You paid Lomachenko. How much Lomachenko got paid to fight Campbell? Because they wanted to have it in the UK. How much they pay him? It was like four or five million dollars. Five, or I think it was five million dollars to do that. And whose promoter is that again? That's Eddie Hearn. They could have paid Lomachenko to fight Devin Haney instead of Campbell and put up a little bit more money. 
say we'll put up seven million dollars. We'll put up seven. We'll put up eight million dollars. We'll put up ten million dollars for you to fight Devin Haney. If they want those fights, they can get those fights for that kid. Because their history has shown that they're willing to do it when it comes to other situations. So can this fight happen next? Absolutely. But Devin Haney, the people that Devin Haney decided to sign to are going to have to have the same energy and do the same thing that they did with Lemchenko versus Campbell, Hooker versus Ramirez, Vargas versus Mikey Garcia. And that's how you get it done. Not talking in the media, not trying to sham somebody. If you really want to get it done, your history has shown that you can get things done when you want to. So go get it done. But for now, like, subscribe, share. I'm out.